Welcome to the Thrasher's Wheat Radio Hour, where the feedback is back. I come down from the misty mountain. Every week we scour the human highway to bring you the best Neil Young news and reviews, rumors and musings, plus rare unreleased tracks and live shows that will keep you rocking in the free world. It's all one song. The Thrasher's Wheat Radio Hour is presented by WBKM.org in the heart of Burlington, Vermont. All right, everyone, here we are. We're back again with another, hopefully, interesting, great conversation here on Thrasher's Wheat Radio Video Hour. To my left, over there, that'd be the Thrasher's Wheat Man himself. Thrasher, welcome. Hey, hey, Tony. It's good to be back. Hey, hey, my, my. All right, here we are. We have officially begun spring since the last uh, episode. Uh, we are on the Easter and Passover and Ramadan weekend, so we send out wishes to everyone who celebrates or doesn't celebrate, as you wish. And today, yeah. Yeah, and happy today we have a, a special uh, treat today. We have yet another visitor from afar who's going to come and join us. I'm, I'm excited about this one. Yeah, yeah, Tony. Uh, it's always good to to reach out to our Rusty's uh, friends far and wide. Uh, so today uh, we're gonna bring on uh, another special guest from afar. Uh, this is our our buddy uh, Mark over in London. Uh, so I guess if you can bring him on in here. <laughs> as soon as I remember, I, I, I guarantee Mark we haven't lost anybody yet. But um, I have to remember how we. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. So I'm hoping this is the right button. Let's find out if that's the right button or not. Um, and there we are. And from the waiting room. Coming in. I, I haven't uh, there we go. Seconds away from there our we good go. friend from yet again, far, far away, a long swim. Mark. Good evening, and uh, welcome to uh, Thrasher's Week Radio Video Hour. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real thrill. It's a real privilege to be here. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So today we're a little south of where our last guest was. Uh, we are in the London vicinity. Is this uh, correct, Mark? Yeah, I'm actually away working in Manchester at the moment. But um, yeah, so we're, um, yeah, we're a good way south of uh, last time. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah, Mark, uh, great for you to join us here uh, on our international Thrasher's Weed edition here. We were just saying uh, it's always good to bring in our Rusties from far and wide. And so I, I know, Mark, we've we've crossed paths at some Neil Young Crazy Horse concerts. Uh, I believe most of them have been in North America, you know, mm -hmm. New York, California. But i um, looking forward to seeing you again soon here on the road. No, oh, fingers crossed. It's um, it's been a long time. It really feels like a long time, but it's good to see uh, shows back on the road in the US and uh, over here too. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed. It'll be soon. Beautiful, beautiful, yeah. encouraging. Yeah. Definitely, mm. definitely. Well, um, yeah, Mark. Uh, maybe just for for benefit of our audience here, um, I know you have a lot of Neil Young history. Uh, maybe tell mm -hmm. us your first uh, Neil Young concert was in what year? And uh, you know, I'm sure you're probably north of a hundred concerts or something like that. Mm -hmm. but, it, it, but just just give a little perspective here. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just shy of the hundred simply because I think um, when lockdown came, I would have been very close to going through the three figures. Um, so mm -hmm. my first, my first show was June, the, I can remember it, I don't even need to look it up, June the 2nd, 1987, uh, at the NEC, and it was Neil and Crazy Horse on the um, somewhat tumultuous um, tour from that year that um, obviously Muddy Track came from. Um, so I was um, stage right, I remember it clear as a bell, stage right, um, 
unbelievably excited. I would have been 19. So the year before everything got cancelled with the ham sandwich, when uh, the hand got sliced by the big knife. Um, so that was a massive disappointment. But then they rescheduled, came back to Europe uh, in the summer of 87. So I saw um, the NEC show. Hearing, it, it's really interesting, hearing summer songs recently, it really took me back to hearing American Dream solo um, at the NEC, which was obviously, I had no internet, no nothing. So I never knew anything about that song. And I thought it was exquisite on the night. And come 1988, when um, American Dream, the album came out, I was very disappointed because of the arrangement. But hearing summer songs, that brings it all back home as to how fabulous that, tri that, that particular song um, really was and still is. Um, so 87, that was my first um, that was my first batch of Neil shows. So a couple in London. Uh, and that was that. That was me, me hooked. All right. Well, needless to say, uh, Mark, and he sometimes goes by Spook the Horse, has, has a lot of uh, Neil Young and Crazy Horse uh, concert experience uh, in, you know, North America and Europe and, and elsewhere. Uh, but, you know, Tony, something that we have in, in common here, this North American European uh, Crazy Horse concert observation experience. Yes, sir. Indeed. I'm a great horse lover myself. Never liked riding the beasts. They always threw me <laughs> off. But uh, this, this horse has generally been uh, uh, a more enjoyable ride. And uh, we had the chance to uh, do that uh, with our good Thrasher and the hounds that howl. Uh, through no, Europe, which was, uh, yeah, you, you've, you've never been through, through Europe or anywhere if you haven't been with Hal. <laughs> it is Europe. It is Europe with uh, Mel Brooks uh, on your backpack. And so it can't even begin to describe the experience, but it was a great one. It was a really great one. Among many others, uh, great uh, opportunities to see uh, all of that over on this side as well. Yeah. So, so we got a, got a lot of um, uh, Neil Young Crazy Horse experience here on this call, and, and we want to mm. kind of get into that a little bit here. So we, we got a couple of subjects we want to cover here, uh, Mark and Tony. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, Mark, you know, really, the, I think the first thing that most Neil Young fans are, are sort of maybe have on their mind here is that I think, as, as we know, um, Neil has gone relatively silent over the past uh, four to six weeks, hasn't really said much or posted much on uh, the archives website, you know, uncharacteristically. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that in the, historically in the past, when, when Neil has gone into a sort of a silent mode, uh, the longer he goes silent, usually uh, whatever comes out of that is, is sort of even more, more um, you know, newsworthy, if you will. But, you know, he may be writing, he may be recording. Uh, we don't really know. But um, Mark, what, what do you think is uh, going on there with uh, Neil these days? I think you're absolutely right. I think when there's radio silence for anything more than two or three weeks, as you say, history suggests uh, that something new is afoot. Um, there was a letter recently published um, on NYA with a response from Neil that was mentioning the first, um, what should we say? So we're in the springtime. So the first bloom of a new record, um, he was discussing in a reply that he'd um, had some new tunes in his head when he'd been walking through the snow in Colorado this winter and he'd been whistling or humming the tunes into his phone. Uh, and now he seems to be just starting to work some of those tunes and pairing them with some words that he's got. So there's actually the, the interesting bit about that um, little response. It didn't seem to suggest that he had a song in his head and he'd written a couple of songs. It seemed to be a jigsaw puzzle, um, which was an interesting bit of minutiae and insight. Um, I don't know how often that happens, but um, it was very interesting to read that. Yeah, so um, yeah, think, thanks on that, Mark. Um, you know, I, I guess, like with all things, Neil, you know, you can't really predict and we'll just have to wait mm -hmm. and see what happens. OK, well, um, you know, and the other thing I think also is on a lot of folks minds here is, you know, like what's up with the horse? Uh, you know, there was the, the barn recording um, last year that was you know in the barn. Is there a, uh, another more barn in the works? Is there a tour in the works? What, what do you think, Mark? <laughs> I think, um, again, there's been any time he's sort of discussed 
any suggestions of recordings post barn he seems to have been very uh he seems to have been very keen on getting the horse back in again um i guess that if they were doing more barn or barn two um then it would be have to be a spring summer project because i don't think you could record in colorado in that uh, barn in the winter um, so i would imagine i mean we know that a thought comes in and a thought goes out an idea comes in an idea goes out a band comes in a band goes out so i am i'd imagine with what was suggested and the going back to the letter that i was um touching on um he mentioned that the songs he'd been or the fragments he was working on were all enviro marches so that suggests um sort of a, a human race type feel um at a guess at a guess but i think the horse seemed to really react to that song on barn and i think um maybe there was an inference somewhere along the line in articles and interviews that he'd quite like to take on another squally raging old black album with the horse one more time so maybe this is it maybe these are all the clues piecing it together and then of course the record will come out and it'll be solo acoustic we know that <laughs> always a a good chance everything we say could be wrong <laughs> <laughs> undoubtedly 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 yeah no um and uh, Tony, we, we know that uh, Neil has some uh, patterns of habit around full moons, right? This is this is true. Yeah, I was just uh, I got a present back in uh, Christmas time, a tide clock. Now I don't live anywhere near a tide, but I always find it fascinating. And so, uh, month after month, I have missed when is the full moon because you got to set it. And then, oh, it was two nights ago, and I missed it. So today. At 11.35 a.m., I was ready. I had my battery. I set my tide clock. And so I can absolutely attest as an almost expert that there was a full moon tonight. So, And tonight, we only got one, so it must be the same moon that everybody else sees. So I'm reasonably right. sure of that. I'm well, glad to guarantee it. It's the only moon. Well, there you go. Well, um, see what happens for this full moon. Okay, well, um, you know, with that, uh, you know, Mark and Tony, um, you know, sort of talking about what Neil's up to, Crazy Horse might be up to, um, you know, we know that the archives are, are coming. Um, archives are always sort of coming. Uh, we got volume one out, we got volume two out, but now we're looking at uh, volume three. Uh, what, what you're kind of thinking about what we might get on this i know there's been a lot of a lot of uh sort of uh speculation and and some letters and stuff mark but what's your what are you looking forward to it's a really interesting question about the new archive um there's so many i think there are so many buried treasures within hmm. archive three i just wonder whether as um we all were really looking forward to volume two with a huge amount of expectation um, in terms of what was going to be in volume two. We had a rough idea because we knew the years that it spanned. So we knew we'd get some old crazy horse that hadn't been heard. Some of the outtakes with, from the Zuma Doom sessions are just spectacular. We know that and we got obviously homegrown slightly before, but that was always seen as the mother load. Volume two was seen as the mother load. I just wonder I just wonder, I have a sneaky feeling that maybe we're going to get far more nuggets than we really expected when it comes to volume three. Um, I'm fascinated here to give to the Wind Orchestra um, the sessions that Neil's referred to. Oceanside, Countryside, that's been something I've longed to hear. It's not just the horse that I love, it's acoustic Neil, it's mellow Neil. Um, and even the sort of curios, Johnny's Island, that's going to be an amazing thing to actually hear in its entirety. And obviously some of the songs we've had that preview as well. So we know how strong, and I think a lot of friends that I've spoken to about some of the songs, that's just come out of nowhere. That's spectacular. How poignant, how moving, how beautiful it sounds. Um, 
so I'm really excited. I'm really excited by volume three because I think it's much more a voyage of discovery and there are mysteries almost around every corner. And we know that it's going to be many, many more discs than we had for volume one and for volume two. So I think it's a super, super exciting volume um, that hopefully, hopefully, hopefully all the information that's been posted so far does suggest that it will come this year, maybe in the summer, maybe in uh, autumn, fall. I think it's going to be spectacular. I really think this is going to be spectacular and this could even knock volume two into a cocktail. I think this is, this is the one. I think this is where all of the nuggets and all the treasure is. Really do. Wow. And what time frame are we uh, looking at here, Mark, do you think? Well, I think given <laughs> that, that it's so hard to keep up, everybody struggles to keep up. We get um, archival releases. We get the live of the bootlegs. Um, we've still got, what have we got? Rainbow. We've got ducks still to come. There's still, what else is mentioned for 2022? Toast. Oh, toast. Um, but I, I keep getting the impression that once this batch of bootlegs, the archival bootlegs, um, has been completed, or even if we, it may even just finish with what we get coming soon, um, with the 71 and, um, Citizen Kane from 74. So maybe once they're done, maybe there's going to be a little pause, then we get volume three, maybe rainbow, um, maybe um ducks maybe noise and flowers of course there's the promise of the real live album that's still being um mooted for this year so that mm. I, I i can't quite work out where the time frame is but i get the impression that it may be sort of late summer for volume three i don't think there's going to be any surprises until maybe july august maybe early september but that's kind of where i'd imagine from what I've read and the suggestions from Neil himself, that's kind of what I'd be sort of looking for. And I think it's going to be spectacular. Well, the promise of the real album, you know, the promise of the real rejoining Neil, uh, very exciting as well. So none of these are, are things that we say, ah, oh, let's just skip that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, a, that's a great, exciting, uh, young, vibrant band that uh, takes yeah. years away when you see Neil on that stage. Uh, he's uh, he's back to being a, a fifty-year-old. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I'd throw one back at you guys. Out of all those, would you prefer ducks, noise and flowers from Promise of the Real, and maybe say Toast or Ragged Glory too? Would you prefer those to yet more as we're getting nineteen seventy-one solo shows? All right, I'll be the one to jump in. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the the former, not the latter. Uh, I, I yeah, the possibility of, uh, of 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 more horse from that great great time period of ragged glory. That that's my Christmas right there. So you know, and and promise of the real. That's that's the birthday present. So you know. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well, I would just say I because. I recently looked at some of the set lists that were being played during the Ducks uh, songs, and there's a lot of songs there I've never heard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I think some of them are, are covers of other other bands, but still yeah. there would be you know something new and different. Um, well, you know, uh, just backing okay. up for a second here, uh, Mark and Tony. So, Tony, you, you asked for a second there about the, the timing on this. And what I thought you were going to say, Mark, is like, you know, volume two ended like in 72 and this is supposed to go till, you know, 82. So what what do you see the the range of volume three to be, Mark? Uh, you know, I think we know where it starts, but where, where do we think it stops? Oh, it's the million dollar question, isn't it? I think bearing in mind they're talking Johnny's Island, so it takes us all the way into the 80s, whether what the cutoff will be, because I, I again was chatting to friends when volume two was in the offing and we were we were kind of expecting it to go maybe up to and um, cutting off at Geffen years. That didn't happen. So that was like, oh, okay. So volume two wasn't quite as expansive as we thought. So I'm guessing that volume three, given the number of discs that are, you know, double figures is 
what's being mentioned. So I guess it could take us all the way through the Geffen years, depending on what contractually they've sorted with, you know, Geffen and um, where they go with that material. So I guess that it could take us right up to, right up to Ragged Glory, maybe Ragged Glory era, and maybe even sneaking into the very early nineties. Hence, we've recently had that um, exquisite natural beauty without the overdubs. The overdubs were fine, but the the, the solo is absolutely magnificent. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of wonder whether it could go right up until the early 90s. So it's a huge era, you know, from picking up from the mid 70s all the way through. But I kind of wonder whether this is where they play catch up. This is where they play catch up with where they are and move it on quite quickly through quite a vast chunk of Neil Young's career. I kind of wonder whether it might go into the early 90s. It might not. Um, if it doesn't, where does it cut off? Do you cut it off when he comes back to reprise Warners or do you carry on and just sort of edge into that ragged glory territory? Or I find it interesting that natural beauty has appeared because it, I always wonder whether there are clues and it's when you are, it's like every other fan of every other artist, you can sometimes overthink things. I know that I'm terribly guilty of overthinking things, but I do wonder whether they've been going, oh, natural beauty, oh yeah. And they're listening to maybe material that's already in prep for volume three, possibly even for, vol maybe it's a clue for volume four, who knows, but it's interesting. They're obviously been working on it and something made them go, you know what, we need to put this out and let people hear it. Um, so I kind of wonder whether it could be around about the end of the eighties or very much in, just into the early nineties. That'd be my guess. Mm. Sounds like a good uh, educated guess. There's a lot maybe changing in in that ending period there, and so you have to wonder, um, you know, can you open that lid just a little bit without it being well? Why did you do that and not just full blown open the lid? But now you've got 20 discs. <laughs> it also yeah. has to be somewhat somewhat uh, marketable and somewhat affordable. <laughs> Even for uh, the, uh, the rabbit. Uh, absolutely. And that's key. I mean, we know that volume two was, we know it was worth the money because it was so beautifully produced. The book was beautiful and everything that came with it. We know, but again, it is a matter of costing as well. So it's going to be, you know, north of, for us over here in the UK, it would be, I suspect it'll be north of 200 pounds. So it'll be, 250 euro for our friends in Europe and it will be 250, 260 euros. Um, and for dollars, it could be three, you know, you could be getting close to three, $350. And as you say, it has to be marketable. It will be because we know there's a percentage of all of us who will buy, but it just needs to be marketable and I guess profitable too. Yeah, yeah. And these are sensitive times uh, in, mm in in terms of economics um and not that it isn't always but even perhaps more so coming out of the situation of the last two years mm. a lot of changes have happened in people's lives you don't want them to be well i if i was in a record company i would be concerned that you leave people behind uh and that's not what you want to do with uh, mm. your fan base agreed yeah, yeah, good, good point there, Tony. Um, they do um, actually have the, I guess the the digital version of the archives, which would be, I guess the uh, whatever the probably the least expensive option. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'm kind of going back, Mark. Uh, yeah, thanks for all the kind of uh, you know stopping and starting points here for for volume three. Um, you know, uh, you're right. Uh, a lot of uh, sort of speculations and guesses of where that could all go. Um, so. You know what I'll say here, uh, Mark and Tony. Probably we can start wrapping up here. And and Mark, I'll let you kind of maybe say. You know, we covered a lot of ground here um, in terms of what we know and and don't mm -hmm. know. And um, you know, I sort of set you up there with uh, where do you think you know volume three will will stop? Because that would 
also answer the question of where does volume four start? Mm -hmm. What are we looking at there? Do you want to just take a crack at volume four wow. or just leave that for another day? Uh, well, you know, I, I it's strangely, I wonder whether um, there's an there's a there's a line that was sort of drawn in the sand after those 92 solo shows. Things changed and he picked up electric guitar again. So I know that Ragged Glory and we, you know, but after that, it seems like, so then he picks up with Booker T in 93, does Bob Fest, everything else. So I wonder whether that may be a starting point. So you've got any yeah. Booker T in um, material um, and that can take us on into Sleeps with Angels era, of course, Mirable, the Mirable film to come. So that could be a, a, an archival release as well, as well as being separate. Um, where that would end, uh, you would, again, if they did a big jump, you could find it taking us anywhere from Toast era, Crazy Horse in 2001, or beyond that to, well, you know, take your pick. You could go right up to Greendale and beyond, or you could go further still, Prairie Wind. It's it's an absolute mystery, but the mis more of a mystery is what on earth is going to be an archive for that's going to be so radically different to what's already been released. So that's that's the um, that's uh, you know that's as as much as a, a voyage of mystery as volume three is despite us knowing some of the material that will be there volume four wow bring it on <laughs> volume four bring it bring on it. Mm. bring it on bring on the horse bring, bring it on. on the horse bring yeah. on the horse bring on toast bring on bring. toast is the one <laughs> i've been going on about toast for 20 years almost ever since i heard that it was being recorded i am just I'm desperate to like it. If, it. if it comes out and I think, oh no, this is a terror, I don't think it will because I think I still, I'm still convinced that things like Welcome Back, I think Neil's listened to Toast over a, a couple of points over the last 18 months, two or three years, and influences of Toast have been put into where he is. And I think Welcome Back may be an influence by Toast type of thing, even though when I sort of had a letter published, he didn't even go into that. But, you know. Again, you overthink things as, as fans and we overthink things, but yeah, maybe. But Toast, bring it on. I'll have that too, please. That's my Christmas and birthday all in one, Tony. <laughs> Nothing like the smell of the horse and smell mm. of fresh toast at the same mm. time. In the bar, I mean, it doesn't get better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite quite an image. Yeah, well, I think that's the, the great thing about, you know, Neil Young, Crazy Horse fans, you know, we, we have a lot. We're, we have a lot to be thankful for in terms of what we have, and we have a lot to be thankful for about what's in the pipeline coming down the road. So yeah. it's all good. So, uh, you know, it I think this good. is a good, good, um, you know, place to kind of wrap up for the day here, Tony, Mark, um, Mark, I don't know if you hit all, all the points or anything else you want to say before we go here. Anything else? No, that's, it's all good. I love it. That was great. I really enjoyed that. Thank you for having me on again. It's been, uh, hugely entertaining and it's great to talk to you guys thank you for having me again thank you excellent well thanks for taking the time out from your work day and uh, all that covering uh, sports for bbc so fantastic yep. no problem fantastic thank you My pleasure. To that too. all right all right well we'll see you next time keep on rocking there mark will do take it easy guys well there we go uh thresher here we are we've uh, burned through another bit of time and uh, had a great conversation with a, a fine gentleman. Yeah, absolutely, Tony. Um, it was great, great seeing you and, and Mark and uh, we'll uh, catch up with everybody again uh, down the road. For uh, everybody on behalf of all this whole crazy thing that we all do and uh, enjoy, uh, thanks for being with us. Thrash's Week Radio Video Hour. <laughs>